Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of designing software systems. Now I'm making this video because there was a lot of demand to actually code out the system that we had designed and planned out in the previous video. So if you guys appreciate this, please do leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are not already. But what we're going to be doing is just taking this design that we kind of planned out in the previous video and translating this into some Python code. Now I want to make it very clear here before we get started that what I'm doing here is just my opinion of what the best way to go is. This isn't necessarily the only correct way. There's many different ways you can implement systems like this and you know three, four different people looking at this design are probably going to have different code that implements it. So just keep that in mind that if you maybe have a different idea of how you'd want to do something, it's not necessarily incorrect and I might actually make mistakes throughout this video and I'd love if you point them out in the comments down below so that I can learn from from them and so that everyone else watching this video can see those as well. So anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and start coding this out. But the first step to actually coding this out is going to be to determine where we should start. Now, picking where to start can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming, especially if you have a ton of different classes in a very large system. The rule of thumb for me is usually just to pick the simplest classes and start programming those ones out first. The ones that have the least amount of associations, you know, only a few properties, maybe not such complicated methods, and just start kind of at least making a template for those classes and getting those kind of into the system. And then slowly you can start building your way into the more complex ones. So my approach for this diagram right here is going to be to start with this address class. The reason for that is because in my opinion, this is the simplest. It has one association between person and address, so one association with person, and it only has attributes inside of it. It has country, city, state, and then I believe we had province, um, and what else, or sorry, no, country, city, state, postal code and street address were the attributes we have for address. So pretty simple class and something that I think is good to start with. Next, I'm going to go to person. The reason I'm going to code out person is because this is an abstract base class for the student class and the professor class. So I have to program this one before I program student and professor. So of course that logically makes sense to do. And then after I do person, I'm going to do student and professor because they simply inherit from person. And then I'm going to do course and enroll, probably do course first and then enroll because enroll has an association between course and student. So it makes sense to program enroll once all the other classes it's associated with are finished. So that's kind of my game plan here. Things might change. We might go on some different tangents as we go through the video, but uh, that's just kind of how I decide where I want to start. So let's go and start programming address. Now notice that what I've done is I've just made a new folder and I've just put a new file in here. They don't have anything in them right now. They're just placeholders. that are named the same as each of my classes. Now usually this is common practice and it's good to do just to make um, all of your classes in different files that are named that class. So for example, I'm going to do class person inside of the person.py file, right? It just makes it way easier when you're importing stuff and finding things later, but it doesn't really matter. You can do all of these in one file if you really want. So I'm going to go ahead over here to address.py. I'm going to start making this class. Now this one's really simple. It doesn't have any inheritance or anything like that. And we're just going to define our constructor which is something that we have to think about a little bit. So when we make these classes, uh, they have a bunch of properties, right? And a bunch of different attributes and, and all of that fun stuff. So how do we decide what the constructor for all of our classes should look like? Well, usually what I do is I take any of the attributes here and I say, okay, are these necessary? Do I need to have them when I create this class? And if the answer is yes, then I put them in the constructor. Now, if there's any attributes there that aren't necessary, that maybe are only going to be created or instantiated later in the class's life, then I don't put them in the constructor. Now, another thing to consider is associations. So for example, we have person and address, which are associated together. Now, each address will belong to simply one person, right? That's kind of what we decided beforehand. So we could technically say that we want to have a person class in the constructor of address because every single address belongs to one person and we want that address to know what person it belongs to. Now, we actually don't really need to do that because for this um, 
system itself, I don't think it matters if the address knows what person uh, it belongs to, right? I think the address is just an object that stores, you know, the state of the address, like this is where the address is, just information. And I don't think it needs to know what person actually is living at that address. So I'm not going to actually associate going, if I can get, uh, can I get this pen here? Yeah, let's, let's do some drawing. I'm not actually going to do the association in this direction. I'm only going to do the association in this direction. So this is where we also talk about directional associations. You can have an association that only goes one way. And what that means is that one of the classes can view the other, but the other cannot view that other class. Now I said other like six times there, but hopefully that makes sense. We're only going to associate person to address, not address to person. So that's something we probably should have specified when we did the original design, but not a huge deal. And again, as I said, things will change as you actually go into the implementation. So let's now just finish coding this out. So we're going to say self, country, state, city, uh, street, and postal code like that. So that's going to be what we have in our constructor. And then we're just going to have to uh, link all of these to a self attribute. So self.country equals country, self.state equals state, self.city equals city, self dot street equals street and self dot postal equals postal. Now I'm just going to change the name of this one to be postal code uh, just because I think that's what we used when we were actually planning out this uh, what do you call it, this class, so just to say consistent. And with that, the address class is pretty much finished. We actually don't need to do anything else. This is all we really need inside of this class. And again, the reason I decided to program it first. So now that we've done address, I'm gonna move over to person. I'm gonna start programming this one. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, since the person class is actually gonna be associated with the address class, is I'm gonna import that address class. So I'm gonna say from address, import address like that. Now, the way this works is that when you have files inside of the same folder, you can simply name the Python file without the .py extension. And you can say from this Python file, import the class address. That's all I'm doing. I'm just saying, okay, let's look inside of this address file here and let's take this class and import it into here. All I'm doing, pretty straightforward. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say class person like that. And I'm gonna define the constructor for my person. Now we always start with self, but let's see what else we need inside of person. So you need a first name, last name, date of birth, and phone number, so let's add that. So I'm just gonna say first, last, DOB for date of birth, and then phone. Now, it doesn't really matter what you name these, what is more important is what you name the self attribute, so I'm gonna say self.first underscore, oops, first underscore name equals first. I'm gonna say self.last underscore name equals last self dot date underscore of underscore birth equals dob which just stands for date of birth and then self dot phone equals phone now we're not quite done yet because we actually need to figure out how we're going to deal with this association which is a one to one to many with person and address so essentially what this is saying is that each person has to have at least one address but can have many so how do we deal with that association how do we actually create that well what i'm going to do here is i'm actually going to put address like that. Now this is because what I'm saying is that okay whenever we create a person we need to have at least one address that that person has. So I say address like that and that is going to be a mandatory thing that we need to pass in. Now the question is what is this address? Like is it actually an instance of address of the class address or is it a list of different addresses right? Because if we look back at our diagram here we can have many different addresses. We don't just have to have one. So how do we determine if they're just getting one, if they're getting many, how do we deal with that, right? Well, this is where things can get a little bit tricky, but I'm going to show you kind of my solution to this. And again, there might be better ways to do this, but this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say self.address is, so self.address is because there are multiple addresses, equals a blank list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow this address parameter here, this yeah address parameter to either be a list or to be an actual instance of an address. And what I'm going to do is when this address is passed in, I'm going to verify that this is the correct type. And if it's not, I'm going to raise an error to the user and say, hey, you know, this is wrong. Pass me the right thing. 
Now this is good practice to make sure that your parameters are passed in as the correct type because Python is not a typed language. So if you want to make sure that you're getting the correct types and set uh, inside of your classes, then what you want to do is you want to verify that the types that are passed in as the parameters are correct. So the way that we can do this is we can look at this address parameter here and we can check if it's an instance of this address class or if it's an instance of a list. So if it's an instance of an address class, then what we're going to assume is they passed us one address. So when they made a new person, they said something like, you know, person and then they blank blank whatever for all of the other stuff so dot 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 and then they pass us like an address that had you know all the information inside of it that's a potential what they could also pass us that would be valid would be something like and just ignore the other arguments there and then a list that has address classes inside of it right so that's another thing that they could pass in because we could either have one address or we could have many addresses associated with this person so we have to check for these two forms uh, and make sure that those are valid so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say uh, underneath here and we could put this in another method if we wanted to but i'll just write it in here for now if address is instance and then in this case address we will simply say self dot addresses dot append address. So we'll say if this is a singular instance of the class address, which we've imported here, then simply append that to our addresses list. We'll say else, well actually we can say L if address is, uh, oops, I don't think I have to have double is a sorry, just should be is instance. And then in this case, I believe I've been doing this wrong. We're going to say is instance of address list like that. Then we can do something else here, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But let me just fix this one up here. So sorry, guys. What we actually have to do is just say if is instance address address. So we don't have to say address is instance. That's just my bad. I'm speaking other languages here. But is instance address, which is what was passed in of the class address, then we append that to the addresses list. Otherwise, if is instance address a list, then what we need to do is make sure that each entry in the list is an address. So we're going to say for, you know, entry in address, if is instance entry address like that then we'll keep going. So actually what I'm going to say is if not is instance entry address, and if we spell entry correctly, then I'm going to raise an error that simply says invalid address like that dot dot dot. So I'm just telling the user that, hey, this was invalid. You gave me address that wasn't OK, and I'm just crashing to make sure that they know, hey, this is wrong. You need to give me a valid address. This is just good practice. I'd rather crash when someone creates the class than later on in the class's life when they try to do something and then it's not valid because they created it incorrectly. That's just my idea behind this. Then what we'll say is self dot addresses equals address. So what I've essentially done is said, OK, you know, if it's a singular instance, append it to our list. If it's a list and all of the entries in that list are actually an instance of the address class, then what we can do is just make this self dot addresses attribute equal to the list that they passed in. And then later on, we can, you know, append things in here if we want to add another address and so on. So the next thing I'm going to do is make a method here. I'm going to say add underscore address like that. We're going to go self. We're going to take an address. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say if not is instance address address. Then what we're going to do, and actually, let me just add an else statement here, guys. Um, oops, <laughs> it's going to have to be after this. So we'll go else raise error. And then here we'll say invalid address dot dot dot. So the reason I added this else statement, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, is because if it's not in these two forms, if neither of these two is valid, then it was invalid. So we just tell them it's an invalid address. OK, so next one, add address. If not is instance address address, then what we'll do is we'll raise the error and we'll say again, invalid address dot 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 a little bit repetitive, but that's fine. And then if that's fine. So if we get past this if statement here, what we'll simply do is we'll say self dot addresses dot append and the address like that. Awesome. So that is add address. We could add one for delete address as well. But for now, I think that's fine. Um, we're going to leave the person class at that.
So now we're going to do student and professor. So you can see we've finished this one up. We've checked that address is valid. So we've done the is instance stuff. Uh, we've raised our errors. Again, the errors are to make sure we can't create an invalid class so that things crash now rather than crashing later, which is kind of just better in software development. You want that to happen. And now we'll go ahead and do student and person, which are going to inherit from person, uh, student and person, student and professor. So student has one extra attribute on it, which is international, and then it has is part time and probation as two methods. So we're going to have to implement those as well. But let's go ahead and make the student class. So we're going to start by importing this person class because we need to inherit from it. So we're going to say from person, import person like that. And we're going to say class student like that inherits from person. So in Python, this is the basic inheritance. You just put it in brackets like that. And now this means that the base class is person and that the derived or child class is student. Now we're going to start by defining our constructor. Now, since we are uh, inheriting from person, we need to have the same constructor as person, except with a few extra attributes that are going to be specific to student. So I'm just going to copy these. So we have define init self first last dob phone address and then what else do we have on student we had international like that so i think i spelled that correctly i'm gonna make this a default parameter and just set it at false so what this means is that if you don't pass any value for international we're just going to assume that the student is not international. That's a good practice as well for things that you may not necessarily always need to pass. You can just make them a default parameter and then be kind of the class can assume if it doesn't see that no, the student is not international. So what we'll do here is we're going to say super like that dot underscore underscore knit underscore underscore. And we're going to go inside here. And we're going to say self first if we could get this correct last dob phone and address and what this is going to do is simply call the person constructor with these arguments that we pass here then what the person class is going to do is it's going to assign all of these attributes that we've had here it's going to do this check that we had here inside of the init and then all we have to do is say self dot international equals international so this will assign all of our uh, properties attributes whatever you want to call them we can add one extra here that wasn't in this constructor and we're good to go and that's again one of the reasons we use this as a base class because now all that stuff that we wrote inside of here we can simply use by just writing super dot init and then passing the arguments that we need awesome so now that we have that we need to go back and look at our diagram and think about what associations this student class is going to have so the address association is already handled from our base class person, but we are going to actually have another association with this enroll class that we're going to have to handle. And oops, I did not mean to do that. Let's get rid of that. So we need to handle the association with enroll. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say self dot enrolled equals a blank list. Now, since when we create a student, they're not automatically enrolled in anything, there's no need to add anything to the uh, what is it the constructor here what we'll do is we'll just add some methods that allow us to add a new enrollment to this student class so this is just a placeholder saying hey we're going to have an attribute that holds all of these enrollments and that will handle kind of the association between our student and our enrollment and, and that is as easy as it is so we're going to define here add underscore i guess enrollment you can call these whatever you want i'm going to go with add enrollment we're going to take enroll like that and then what we're going to do is the same check that we've done before. And we're going to make sure that this enroll here is actually a valid enroll class. Now, since I've yet to code out the enroll class, what I'm going to do in here is just go class enroll and just go pass for now, just so that when I import this, I don't get a crash. So I think enroll, I don't know if it's spelled with two L's or one. Um, excuse me if I'm spelling this wrong, but I think it can be either way. But regardless, let's just stay consistent and let's go enrolled i don't know if that looks right i want to go two l's let's just go two l's uh and we'll change the name of this file so enroll and let me rename this one here to enroll okay so we've just done a placeholder just so i can import this from student so i'm going to say from enroll import enroll like that now we're going to do the same thing we did previously we're going to say if not is instance enroll enroll and this will have to have our two L's here. Then what we'll do is we'll simply raise an error like that. And we'll say in valid enroll. 
right? And that's as easy as that is. We can add that dot 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 just to stay consistent. Again, it doesn't really matter. And then what we'll do is say self dot enrolled dot append enroll like that. So there we go. We now have a way to add enrollments to a student. And let's go back to student and check what else we need to do. So we've already handled international. We've handled the association between enroll. And now we need is part time and probation. So I remember that I believe is part time is if you're taking less than three classes, you're considered part time. I forget exactly what the document said, but we're just going to assume that for now. And pro probation, I believe it was if your grade point average is less than 65, then you're on probation. So we don't necessarily need to implement these yet. But what we can say is define um, what is is on probation like that. This can be a self. And for now, we're just going to return false and we'll come back later and implement these uh, methods just once we've coded out the enroll class. So then we'll know how grades are handled and this will make more sense. And then we're going to define is oops, is underscore part underscore time like that self. And now we're just going to return false as well. And again, we'll come back and implement this later once we have a better idea of how the enroll class actually works. Although um, now that I'm thinking about it, what we can do is just say return the len of self dot enrolled is less than oops, sorry, is part time is less than or equal to three. So what this is saying is that if you have less than uh, or equal to three classes, so three, two or one classes or zero, I guess, then you are considered a part time student. If this number is greater than this, of course, you're not going to be a part time student. So that's the student class. Now we're going to go ahead and do the professor class. So we're going to uh, go ahead and import person as well. So we're going to say from person, import person. And now we're going to say class professor inherit from person. And then we're going to do define underscore underscore init. I'm going to go look at the professor class and see what we need here. So the only main difference between professor and person is that it has this salary attribute here. So we'll just go ahead and add that. And then we'll need to handle the association between course. And then we'll code out course and enroll. We should be done actually programming this system. So we're going to say that we need the same stuff as person. So we need all of that. So we'll paste that inside of here. And what else do we need? We need a salary. All right. So now we'll do the same thing we did inside of students. So we'll say uh, it's not self super dot underscore underscore knit. We'll pass all of this stuff in except for salary, of course. And then what we'll do is we'll say self dot salary equals salary. And we've done it the constructor except for the association with courses. So now we'll just say self dot courses equals a blank list like that. Now, I remember that professor actually has um, are given a raise if they teach a certain amount of courses. Now, we didn't actually define a method that we have on professor to handle, you know, do they get a raise or not? But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a method here that says define uh, check underscore for underscore raise. And what this will do is just check to see if the professor deserves a raise based on how many courses that they're teaching. So I think it was something like if they teach more than four courses a semester, or five courses or whatever it is, uh, then they get a $20,000 raise. So all I'm going to do here, um, this is kind of just like mocking how you would really do this because this isn't necessarily pre precise. I'm going to say if the length of self dot courses is greater than or equal to four, then self dot salary plus equals 20,000. So this is just going to say, okay, check for raise. So whenever we call this and technically you could call this many different times if you wanted to write, uh, then we will add $20,000 to the salary if they teach more than four courses. Now I'm just going to make another attribute here. I'm going to say self dot got underscore raise. And I'm going to set this equal to false. And this is just going to make sure that we can't get this raise multiple times. So I'm going to say once we give them the raise self dot got oops, got underscore raise equals true. And then I'm going to add inside of this if statement, if the length of self dot course is greater than or equal to four and self dot got raise. So and not self dot got raise, then we'll go ahead and do this. So again, just to make sure that we can't just spam this and keep raising the professor's salary um, and have some level of kind of security here on the professor's salary, because obviously that's an important thing. Now, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, define add underscore course. So of course, we need a way to add a course to this professor's course list. So we're going to say self 
and then we're gonna say course like that and then we're gonna do the same thing we've done many times before which is means we need to go over here to course and say class course like that and just do a pass so we can import this from inside a professor so now we're gonna say from course import course and we're gonna check to make sure that this is an instance so we're gonna say if not is instance course of course then raise error like that and just tell them in valid course dot 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 okay then we'll say self dot courses dot append course like that awesome so with that I believe the professor class should be done so we finished person student professor and address and now we need to do course and enroll now I believe I said I was gonna do course first so we'll do that and let's just look at what's in course so we have name code min max and is canceled now course is associated with professor and with enroll and you need at least one professor for a course to actually be run so when you create a course you need to give it a professor so that means inside of our courses uh, what do you call it constructor we're gonna need to have a professor as an argument or as a parameter so let's go ahead and add that let's go define underscore underscore init underscore underscore we need self we need a name for the course the code the max the min um, what else was in this course I believe max min code name and then professor okay so professor awesome now since professor class is finished we can go ahead and import that at the top so we're gonna say from professor uh, import professor like that now we'll do the same thing we've done many times so we'll say self dot name equals name self dot code equals code self dot max equals max self dot min equals min don't worry that these are highlighting this just means that this is a reserved keyword in python min and max uh, i'm just going to be overriding them for this class it's not a huge deal although you usually don't want to do this so i could do something like max underscore min underscore just to avoid that um, so that we don't get those highlights so let's actually do that max min and then we'll say self dot professor and usually I just say this equals professor but for now I'm gonna say it's a blank list and the reason for that is because we need to check if this professor is one professor if it's a list of professors and if it's valid so again if we go back to our diagram we can see that we have a one-to-many associated with many which means a professor doesn't necessarily automatically teach a course when it's uh, when a professor object is created but when we create a course object we must have at least one professor teaching that course so we're gonna have to do the same thing we did inside of uh, person here with the address so I'm actually gonna copy all of this here I'm just gonna change the word address to be professor uh, and that's because it's gonna be handling the exact same thing but inside of the uh, the course class so we're just gonna say if is instance and I guess I can actually just do a control H here and I'll just say oh how did know that professor was what I wanted there uh, oh wait address we'll replace address with professor uh, and that should actually be good so let's go replace all so that's done everything uh, except professors so we actually need to add es to this so professors is it professors yes or is it just s I'm just gonna do s for now although I don't know if that's correct uh, but that actually should be good so it says if is instance professor professor so this just needs to be a capital uh, then we'll append into the uh, professors list that professor otherwise if instance professor list uh, for entry in professor if not is instance entry professor with a capital P then raise error invalid professor and then self dot professors equals professor uh, awesome invalid professor okay so I think that looks good you guys can read through that if you're a little bit confused but again it's doing the exact same thing that I explained when we handled the address inside of person this time just with professor because it has that same um, lower bound of one up to many association okay so next we need a way to actually add courses to a professor sorry add professors to a course because say we're in the middle of a course maybe the professor changes or maybe we need to add a new professor that's something that could happen so we're going to say define add underscore professor like that and I believe it's one f and two s's we're going to say self professor and then inside of here we're going to say if not is instance professor professor 
raise error like that and we're just going to raise error invalid professor like that dot 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 okay then if that is good we'll say self dot professors dot append professor and we should be good to go so with that i don't know if course is done or not i think we have to add a method or two so we need to add the is cancelled method and we actually need an association from course to enroll which i had forgotten so i'm going to go up here and i'm going to say self dot enroll mints like that is equal to a blank list we're going to do a very similar thing uh, that we did with the student class when we were adding enrollments like that um, to the course. So self dot enrollments. I think that makes sense to call this enrollments because you were enrolled in the course. Uh, and then on the student side, enrolled I think makes sense as well. But let's add a way to actually add enrollments to this uh, to this course. So that's also going to involve first of all implementing enroll. So from enroll, import enroll. And now let's go define add underscore enrollment we're going to take self and enroll and we'll do the same thing we've done before we're going to say if not is instance enroll enroll then raise error invalid enroll and then what we'll do is otherwise we'll say self dot enrollment dot append enroll now the only thing we need to consider here is this max and this min so obviously we cannot enroll over the max so we'll have to do another check here that says if so we'll say if uh, I guess the len of enrollment is equal to the max so so we'll say self dot max like that then we need to raise an error that simply says cannot enroll course is full dot 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 just to tell them that hey you know we can't enroll you in this because this course is full and that means that they need to do a check before they go ahead and enroll someone in here and make sure that it is not full so what i'm going to do here i'm going to say now add the other method that we needed so is cancelled so we're going to say define is underscore cancelled we can call this at any time and self is going to be in here and what we're going to do is simply return the len of self dot enrollments because that tells us how many people are enrolled is greater than or equal to self dot min and actually sorry this is going to be less than or equal to so what this is saying is okay you know the course is canceled if we have less enrollments than the minimum amount of enrollments that we need i just got rid of that equal sign because if we're at the min we're not canceled it's only if we're less than the minimum amount of students so with that i think the course is done Again, it might be a good idea to add a way to remove um, professor and remove enrollments, but for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to add that. And the last thing we need to do is actually code out this class for enroll. Now, this one is a very easy class to do. This simply has an association between, let's have a look at it here, a professor, or sorry, not a professor, a course and a student. So this uh, enroll class needs to have a student and needs to have a course. Uh, on it right so it needs to have that associated and it needs to have the date that they were enrolled and the grade that they were um, that they were given for that course that the professor f that has access to the course will be able to change so the reason that the professor will be able to change the grade for a student is because it has a link to the course let me just make this full screen here so it has an association of the course so it can see what courses it's teaching it can go into the course it can look at all of the enrollments for that course and then for all inside of all those enrollments it can access the grade and it can change the grade for a specific student um, that's associated with that enrollment so that allows the professor to actually change the grade of a student so i just wanted to make that clear in case anyone's confused on how that would happen but let's go class enroll and we'll say define init what we need for enroll is we need a person which is going to be our student and we need a course so same thing here we'll make sure that the student and the course are valid so we're going to have to import those here so we're going to say from course import course no not lowercase oops go back we want the capital and we'll say from student is it here i guess not from student import student so now we'll say if not is instance student student or not is instant course 
course if we get this typing correctly and in fact what I'm actually gonna do is put this on another line just so we can have two custom error messages then what we'll do is the same thing we've done many times we'll say raise error invalid student dot 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 and then same thing here we'll say raise error invalid course now let's assume that those ones are okay so we our student and our course are fine then we'll say self dot student equals student and self dot course equals course and then we're going to say self dot grade equals none because currently it has no grade and then we'll say self dot date equals and here i'm going to import date so i'm going to say from actually i think it's date time from date time import date time and i'm going to say date time dot now so that should give us the current time i think that's valid this might be incorrect but i'm pretty sure that's how you get the current time and then what this will do is automatically when a new enrollment happens it will keep track of the time that that enrollment occurred at it will say the grade is none and then we'll add a method that says define set underscore grade we can go self grade and we can just say self dot grade equals grade like that now there's other ways to go about doing this this is just a simple way so i'm going to do that here and this means anyone that can see this enroll class can just look at it and say hey set grade self dot grade equals grade uh, or just pass a grade in here and it will automatically set that grade for the student so with that all of our classes are actually finished and that is how you go about translating a uml class diagram to an actual system now of course currently none of this is really you know functioning right none of this is actually working these things nothing's being created we would have to actually make a program that uses this class uses these classes to test it but the point of this was to show you pretty much how we handle these associations and some common practice in terms of checking uh, the validity of different arguments right so in python a non-typed language we need to do something like this just to make sure that when items are passed in or arguments are passed in they're valid and that we don't have a class that has all these weird things that we, we're not expecting right the general idea is we want to crash before we actually start running the program so i want to crash when someone you know creates an invalid person object rather than when the person tries to access something on the person object and it's not the item they were expecting right it just makes it easier to crash earlier on so that someone knows hey i need to make sure i add a valid address and they don't you know go through the whole program with a valid address inside of the person object and can't figure that out until later when it crashes at some random point in time right that's the idea behind that i hope that is kind of making sense and again that's kind of how you go about implementing this now, as I said, um, you know, there's many different ways to do this. And in fact, there's probably a lot of other methods and things that we should be adding to these classes. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to get super complicated. I don't want to go into actually doing a full implementation because, again, that's going to take a really long time. But if you notice any holes or gaps in here, please do leave a comment and let's have a conversation in the comments down below. Hopefully, at minimum, this video showed you, you know, the basic idea, you know, how you get started, what you have to do when you make a base class like I've done here, how you do the inheritance with student and with professor, you know, how you add some methods like this and how you should implement them, uh, how you can do something like this. So we have this uh, this class here that has just two. Uh, what is it? Association student and course. So we have self dot student equals student self dot course equals course. And now from the course side, if we look at an enrollment, we can see what student is involved in that enrollment. We can modify their grade and then the student themselves can look at their enrollment and they can see their grade. Right. Many different things like that uh, is what I wanted to show. So I think with that being said, I'm going to end the video here. Of course, any questions, please do leave them down below in the comments. Like the video if you did enjoy, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in another YouTube video.